All right. Okay. Let's get started with day two of Cryo Winter of Doing. Uh, hopefully, I'm audible on the YouTube stream. Uh, today, we are going to start with rest session. All right. Uh, if you have not joined our Telegram channel or the Slack workspace, uh, it seems like some of you had some uh, issues with joining the Slack workspace. Uh, join the Telegram channel and also maybe ping us over email. We'll be able to sort it out. All right. That's where we post all our updates. So please make sure that you are kind of in these channels. All right. Let's quickly see. So yesterday we started with the kickoff session and then we continue with the flawless HTTP session. Right. Uh, hopefully you saw the part two of the video where we have actually resolved the problem, whatever we faced, and uh, we just like did a redo of the uh, video. And uh, today we want to start off with the REST API. Uh, the goal for you is to hopefully you have completed the HTTP byte already. If not, it's actually a good chance for you to combine HTTP byte as well as REST byte and then finish it today. What I'm going to do today is to quickly give you a glance of what is REST API. Right. You already know how to uh, go into Chrome developer tools, kind of look at what's happening from your browser. So we we'll just like take that one step further. All right. OK, so uh, some of you, it seems like uh, yesterday, given that uh, you had some issues getting started or maybe you missed the Slack notification, it's not too late. If you just like start off with the relevant recordings that we have shared over the Slack channel as well as the Telegram channel, you should be able to get started in like say one, two hours max. All right, and you should be able to complete the HTTP byte as well and the REST API right today. Okay, so feel free to ping us if you have any issues. A uh, few community guidelines, it's uh, extremely uh, kind of like overflowing with a lot of messages, right? The Slack channel, that's amazing to see, right? The kind of uh, energy that's out there, they're kind of getting overwhelmed, right? Like a lot of community advocates and a lot of your peers helping each other out. That's really, really amazing, right? Continue doing that. Uh, just like some uh, ground rules, if you're facing any platform issues, uh, please post it on uh, this bit.ly link. Uh, again, it's shared on your uh, announcements channel. That way we know what is a system issue, whether, you know, or it's a conceptual understanding which your peers can solve. Sometimes you're kind of blocked on logging in or unlocking the byte, et cetera. Please do let us know. We are kind of trying to make sure that you have a great experience. All right, the next thing is, uh, use the appropriate channels in Slack. Uh, there's uh, one channel created for each of the bytes you are doing, like byte HTTP, byte uh, REST, byte Linux, byte AWS, byte Git, right? So please make sure that you post on the respective Slack channels. That becomes very easy for us to actually keep a track on. And also the people who are kind of completed things, you can always pay attention to the Slack channels and then help each other out. Okay, seems like most parts you are already doing that. So uh, really awesome there and then please continue doing so. The other thing is in Slack, there is a feature called thread where you start off con a conversation and then reply within the thread, okay? Instead of typing multiple messages, if you can limit whatever problem you have into a thread, that is much, much easier to resolve as well. Again, something very uh, nuanced. If you're not used to Slack, totally understand, you might type multiple messages, but it becomes very, very easy to resolve a thread rather than a bunch of messages. All right, so some of you seem to be making very good progress. Spend more time with curious cat questions. Try answering them yourselves, right? And there are a lot of reading resources given. Go through them, right? It's an excellent opportunity for you to actually learn quite a bit, right? And given that with Chrome developer tools, I already see people kind of trying out various sorts of things and asking questions. Really a big thumbs up, continue doing that. Uh, also, a lot of peer help is happening, right? Uh, that's actually the way to learn. Okay. So when you see, if when you learn for the first time, you know, you might not have internalization, but as soon as you start doing things, your internalization definitely goes a notch up. But as soon as you start helping your peers, answering their questions, it just like goes to a very, very different level. They might sometimes ask you questions that you might have never thought of that way. You are kind of, you start thinking, okay, hey, did I understand that right? Maybe he's actually bringing a different perspective, right? Suddenly your understanding goes to a great, great extent. All right. And uh, as, as you follow, uh, we'll definitely be awarding you badges as well as you help your fellow uh, peers learn things as well. Now, what did you understand yesterday, right? Uh, based on the HTTP byte, did you uh, understand 
what happens if you upload, let's say, your picture to Instagram profile? Is it going to be a get request or is it going to be a put request or is it going to be a post request? Right? Can you actually answer this without actually going and trying things out? And then you can go and cross verify. All right. Try it out. Right. And I think some of you have already shared the answers on Slack. Try it out. Okay. And you can also try it out on other sites as well. Right. Try doing it on Twitter. Right. See if there is any difference. Okay. There may be differences, by the way. Right. Uh, next thing. What happens when you visit, uh, say, Akshay Kumar's profile? Seems like he has uh, a significant number of followers, 47 million, not bad. Uh, what kind of HTTP request do you think would be made to fetch his latest photo? I think it's a straightforward answer, but go check it out. Mm -hmm. Next one. What if you enter the wrong password by logging into your Insta account? What status code would you be expecting back? Right? You know what is a client error, what is a server error, what is a redirect? I'm guessing you would be able to make a guess, but go try it out. All right. Now, today, I'd like to start off with what is REST API. Uh, fairly simple concept, but before getting in there, let's see. How many mobile apps do you have on your phone? Why don't you uh, take, say, a few seconds and then count them? Just going to give you a pause, maybe a 10-second pause. How many mobile apps do you have on your phone? Maybe 10, 20, 30. I'm guessing there's going to be a, a, inverse, in, a inverse correlation between your age and mobile apps. If you were to take my phone, not really too many apps, but if you're taking somebody slightly younger, I'm going to guess that they're going to have more than 100 apps on their phone, right? Now, have you ever wondered, you are using these day to day, right? So many times, I mean, you're kind of like sleeping with phone, eating with phone. Have you ever wondered how these apps communicate with the backend servers, right? You open Uber, Swiggy, any app, right? It has to talk to some server, correct? How does that whole communication happen? Based on what you did yesterday with HTTP, can you actually make a guess, right? Next, I'm very sure all of you would have used uh, Google Maps, right? And inside Google Maps, when you try to get directions, right? Sometimes there is a hailing a cab option, okay? It doesn't appear in all the cities, but in some of the cities, you'll have hailing the cab as an option, right? Now, it shows up Ola fare or Uber fare or whatever provider you have in your city, correct? And the question is, how is it that Google Maps is able to show the pricing from Ola or Uber, right? And by the way, it's not a static fare. It's not going to say, okay, hey, from here to there, it's about two kilometers or four kilometers. I'm going to multiply that with a fixed number and then show you the fare. If there is search pricing, Google Maps will also reflect that search pricing, right? And of course, if you were to think about it, Ola or Uber is not going to share their code, right? They're not going to share their code with Google Maps so that they can actually get this fair. So how is that happening today, right? Think about these curious cat questions and one more. I'm, I'm very sure that you're all on multiple social apps, Twitter, Insta, whatever, Snapchat, right? And most of them have multiple clients, right? You could access them from say Android device, iOS device, or from your website as well, right? Now, each of them are using different languages as well, right? If you were to see, iOS is using Swift, Android is using Java, and then the web app is going to probably use JavaScript. Now, all of them are talking to the backend. Let's consider this as Twitter. And is Twitter going to maintain different code bases to serve each of these clients? Right? So each of them is written in different language correct, the clients, mobile clients and the web clients, do you think that Twitter is going to maintain different code bases? That doesn't sound right, though you might think, okay, yeah, maybe because they are in different languages, they're rendering things in a different way, right? This is rendering in a different way. This is rendering the UI in a different way, right? You might think, okay, hey, it doesn't sound right, but I don't know how it is happening as well, right? The answer to all these questions will be, uh, uh, you know, is REST API. Okay, as soon as you're done with the REST API byte, you'll have very good answers and clarity about all these questions. All right, we'll get started. <coughs> Sorry.
So, what is REST API? Let's split it up. Start with API. API is just a piece of software, okay? Uh, or rather, sorry, a way for one piece of software to talk to another, right? If you have two programs and then you want to use some function from one program in the other program, then you call the other, other one as an API, okay? You can think of all the libraries that you are used to, right? Let's say I have to read a file, write a file. There are, let's say, five to six functions. You can say that they are all part of one API, okay? All the file handling API. Another example, let's say that I, I, I want to just like simplify things a bit. Okay, let's uh, not going to go into the theoretical definition of some of these. Instead, we'll just like make it slightly more practical to understand. Let's say that I write a function, okay, which is is prime. Okay, it accepts an integer, okay, and then it returns a Boolean as output. Any language is fine, right? All I give you is, hey, here is a function. It's called is prime. It accepts an integer and then returns a boolean. Now you can use it in any part of your code, okay? And whenever you call this function, I'm going to return back the whether or not the number you gave me is prime or not, correct? This particular line alone, right, is called a contract or an API, right, or a function declaration, right? Now what does it say? It doesn't talk about implementation. Right? As soon as I give you this particular API. You don't really care how I'm going to write the is prime program, correct? I may actually have a very, very dumb implementation for it. That is immaterial to you, correct? As long as I serve the contract that if you call is prime with an integer, you're going to get the answer on whether or not it's going to be a prime number, right? If a bunch of such function declarations are combined, you call that as an API, as simple as that, nothing more, right? Now, let's move on to the next step. What is the REST API? REST is essentially an architectural style, or you can think of it as a standard that has a certain set of rules. And any API that conforms to those rules is called a REST API. Okay, now that might sound a bit vague, right? Like it, it's a bit of true theoretical definition. For the purposes of this discussion, we are not gonna go into the conformance part of it. Okay, you can go to Wikipedia, check this out as to what are these rules, and then what do you call as a REST API and then when does it not, should not be called as a REST API, but the conventional use of a REST API term is slightly different, okay? This standard was around 2000, they started, right? And uh, internet has evolved quite a bit from there, right? You wouldn't even have dreamt that there are going to be mobile phones, apps that are going to talk to the backend servers, etc. right? So this is, you know, there is a theoretical aspect to it. And then what happens in reality is slightly different. Today, if you're kind of like uh, talking about REST API in, in, in say job descriptions, or whenever somebody asks you, hey, can you actually write REST API, right? The expectation is slightly different. All they are talking about is REST over HTTP. That's it, right? If your browser or your app is going to talk to the backend server over HTTP, then most often than not, you call that as a REST API. Though technically some of what the companies call as a REST API may not even conform, conform to the REST architectural style. Okay, so there's some usage, conventional usage versus the theoretical aspect of what is the architecture at sea. All right, so we are gonna to stick to this definition to make sure that your understanding is slightly more easier. All right, now let's see. Yesterday, uh, we actually visited the Cryodo website, right? And we opened the Chrome developer tools. I'm going to reload this page again. I'm going to repeat the same experiment. Okay, now, by now, you are very clear that uh, when the page gets loaded, right, when the cryo page gets loaded, it's actually a HTTPS request. It's a get request, got a successful status code of 200 back, it's talking to the remote IP address, all good, okay? It's talking to some URL end of it, correct? The main point, it can be anything. If you come down, what you are getting back is HTML, okay? And if you were to look into it, 
right you can actually see whatever content appears on the site is also going to be there on the html response correct so if we were to see the response right it, it's kind of unstructured you call html response as unstructured okay let's say i want to search for this particular testimonial in the page okay i should be able to find it it was a wonderful journey right i'm able to find whatever text appears on the home page over here in the html response correct now i'm going to quickly come back over here so this is what happened and then this is kind of the response that we got from the site right if you were to see see the amount of uh, structure right the html response back to you is kind of like nested and it's not even kind of something that you can understand right as a human being when you see things being rendered in the browser it seems like fairly clean correct but the html content is not structured for you to understand completely right you have to rely on other cues to make sense out of this data right now let's say hypothetically okay cryo launches a mobile app all right and we want to have a small a tab there right just like all the other apps where only the testimonial show up okay let's imagine that all of you are so happy with cryo winter of doing that you know you want to just like go and then blast it out right and then we bring all those testimonials into the app now the question i have is can we use the same endpoint cryo do which was returning html file right which also had the testimonials to actually power this app simple question right so you have this response which is a html response and we want to create this app and then i want to show all the testimonials the rendering of course will be different right it will not be same as desktop but we want to show it in a different tab we calling https www.creo.do and then getting the html data and then parsing this whole html to get the testimonials is that the right way to even think of this problem like there must be something better than that i'll tell you why now there's very very important thing over here if you understand this concept rest api understanding is done all right let's see there are there is something called unstructured versus structured data okay i'll quickly move back and forth a bit okay if you have to go here on the cryo platform okay, somewhere down below you should be able to see the companies the developers that we have worked with right now let's say that i'm going to i'm just like going to use this point as a reference of course you'll be able to find that over here as well right if i were to search for say flipkart i would be able to see that over here right now i'm going to get back here i want to quickly ask you a simple question a very simple activity okay this is the page uh, just like a screenshot there let's say that cryo wants to add the address of each of these companies as well in the web page right in our web page we want to add the address of each of these companies we have worked with okay can you tell me from this particular uh, image right or it shows up on the website as to whether this is flipkart's address or this is flipkart's address it, it's it's slightly tricky right you could have either design maybe the uh, this address is associated with flipkart or maybe this address is associated with flipkart right either design is totally possible because visually you can have anything on your ui right whatever pleases the eye let's say we move the things a bit okay the individual components are moved slightly away from each other now will you be as a human being will you be able to tell which is flipkart's address and which is visa's address most likely you would be right you would be clearly able to say hey okay you know what this comes closer to flipkart so i'm going to call this as flipkart's address this address is closer to visa so i'm going to call this as visa address so if we were to put this on our site then you would be say or able to say okay hey this address is closer to the logo i'm going to call that as visa or flipkart's address right now can the computer do this right with the html response where you are just like aligning the spaces here and there etc right you are just like changing the styling over here 
correct for computers or any program in the sense a, a program cannot actually comprehend this right you are used to the worldly knowledge that if cryo has a reasonably good designer right they are going to do this way right and most likely they are not going to associate flipkart with this address and this with this address right it's a, it's common sense and worldly knowledge but that is something that is missing in the computers correct which means for computers everything has to be very very precise with html response where this based on space etc it might not be able to say what is what right in this case you need to have structured data all right here usually on web we use json for uh, for uh, sending and returning back structured data the same thing that you saw in the previous page if it is a json which is essentially a key value pair right it says company is flipkart addresses so and so company is visa addresses so and so right now if this kind of structured data is given back by the cryo server it is totally possible for your program to understand which is whose address correct if in html it was very hard but with json or any form of structured data it could be xml or anything else it becomes very very precise for the computer to say what is what all right let's try to understand this with an example okay i'm again going to the cryo site this is the logged in experience i'm hoping you have already seen this right i'm going to quickly go to the network tab and then reload this page right i'm going to go to the bytes tab you can see that there are some bytes that got listed over here so i'm going to find out which particular byte uh, or which particular api response got this data it, it was pure luck i mean i might have tried like few few of these api calls i'm going to lock in on the one that is actually appearing over here right these are different api requests or http requests let's see okay i've clicked on one of the apis okay or http requests let's see what it has it also calls some endpoint right https consumer something right end of day this is no different from the endpoint you have over here correct it's no different actually right the server can decide to do decide to return the other value over here as well okay so it's totally possible it's like how you configured your server all right so there is some endpoint or url that we are hitting the browser is hitting correct it's a https request it's no different from that it's a get request right you must have already learned about post put etc right this is a get request meaning i'm getting some value back it was successful now the difference comes over here over here it says the content type that got returned back is json right earlier we got html and then now we are getting if you can see over here this was html and then over here it is json correct now let's go to the response it is giving us some json response i'm going to go to the preview tab and then see what we got back all right you can see that it is returning back a bunch of uh, json right it's it's an essentially a json array if you have the square bracket it means that it's a json array okay and each of the elements in the array you can see corresponds to some byte over here right the first one says spring boot second one says jackson third one says lombok right so there is some sort of a one on one correspondence between what appears over here versus what is over here right let's click on one of them and then see what is over inside the json right so there are several keys several values as well if i were to ask you okay what is the duration of spring boot byte can you tell me by looking at this data i'm going to pause for 10 seconds can you tell me what is the duration of the spring boot byte right so if you were to simply go through all the things you would find that there is a duration which says 2 hours right 
now let's try one more in the jackson byte can you tell me what skill sets a person who completes this byte would pick up again few seconds break take a look at it all right i'm very sure you would have been able to find that out by looking at the me skills correct as a human being you are able to say okay hey if it is something around the duration i'm going to look at this field uh, if it is skill set i'm going to look at this field now can you write a program which does the same right so you write a program where uh, let's say i'm going to ask you to list all the bytes that are free okay so what you are going to do let's say we are writing the program in python you are going to look for where the price is listed okay there is this field called me base price i'm going to get the response back from the api correct and inside the api there is this key value pair or array of key value pairs in the, uh, and in one of the json object you have each json object contains the me base price as the key correct so in python you write something you can write a parser or there are default json parsers available okay either way you you know string parsing end of day right you look for this word me base price and then you pick the key if it is zero you are going to say that as a free byte if it has some pricing you are going to say that it's going to be charged correct right? so you can write a python program you can write a java program if suppose tomorrow you want to send this to the android app the android app also can call this particular api or the https endpoint get the data back and then put a say token sticker over here saying free or price some something right android app can also do that because it is simple json key value pair if you are using ios app let's say we launch ios app the ios app also can do the same thing correct which means by using structured data you are enabling your program to consume the data and then make sense out of that right unlike html data where you need that extra worldly knowledge or which is called semantic data right it, it doesn't it doesn't have that right like unless you know about the worldly things you can't interpret this data right the html data but over here it's very cleanly structured which means that you can understand the programs or any software that you write can also understand this and one of the most common form of structured data that gets exchanged throughout the internet is json right uh, there are several reasons javascript is ex extremely powerful in processing json it just like processes natively very very fast so that's actually one of the reasons why everybody uses json all right and almost every single language will also have a very solid uh, library to parse json right other forms of uh, structured data you could uh, think of uh, say xml right slightly more time consuming for parsing as well as in terms of space uh, there are other things like protobuf uh, thrift avro right there are several different structured data formats but predominantly on internet you will see json getting used both the communication between your mobile app and the backend as well as websites to the backend all right hope that was clear let's actually get back and one more thing i want to highlight is this request response is no different from the other request response right it's the same get https all the other things remain the same except for the response type correct which means the rest api over here is also a http request correct not the other way around not every http uh, http request is a rest api but converse is true again i'm simplifying the definition of rest api a bit but in in the sense what we are actually looking at it is actually true all the rest apis are mostly going to be http requests as well all right let's get back and wrap it up so as long as you understand this difference between structured data and unstructured data any time your api or the endpoint sends back structured data you are going to call that as a rest api because that can be used in several different ways right it doesn't carry all the styling all those things into picture it just like returns data alone right that can be understood by another program all right 
So this is what we saw. The content type is what makes a difference, right? You are, you are able to answer questions and so is the computer, right? Which means a mobile app can easily use this and then build anything on top of it. Okay, any, any client can consume this data, browser, Android, iOS, it is immaterial, all right? Now, this is what you are going to learn in the rest byte as well. As you go through the byte, you'll be able to play around with different things to get a solid understanding of REST API. Okay, so you're going to start off by playing around with a simple weather API. From there, you are going to dissect a simple weather API and then understand, right, that end of day, a REST API is no different from a simple HTTP request response. All right, you'll be able to see every individual field of it mimicking what you saw yesterday, no different. And uh, the more important thing, why do you have APIs? Because there is a preset contract which can be used by your programs, correct? So you're going to call this weather API from different languages like Python, Java. You could play around, do more as well, right? Based on whatever language you know, you can actually call it from other languages as well. Finally, the post on LinkedIn exercise that some of you have tried yesterday, is actually one of the tasks in Respite. Okay, where you're going to go to your browser, post something on LinkedIn or Twitter, Facebook, wherever you want, copy the API that or the REST API that your browser is sending, copy a curl command, paste it on the terminal, and then you are there. Okay, we'll see if you're going to flood, flood the internet with your learning. All right, does that sound exciting? Uh, how are you guys enjoying the learn by doing so far? Okay, coming week is going to be even more exciting. Starting tomorrow, uh, we are going to have uh, uh, Bini Bansal, uh, the co-founder of uh, Flipkart, right? One of the largest exits in India, right? Um, he's going to have a conversation with you folks. There's this uh, bit.ly link where you can ask your questions for Bini, right? And tomorrow, Ajay will be hosting Bini, all right? It's at six o'clock. We'll be sharing all the details on Slack as well as Telegram. So if you're not there, please make sure that you are on both the channels, right? So that you don't get missed out, okay? Uh, one more thing, I think some of you have already sent emails asking us, okay, hey, you know what? I love the journey. How do I get, go about sharing my learning, right? And we saw some very interesting snippets also in the Slack channels where uh, I think, uh, I forgot the exact sequence, but somebody was asking, uh, if I post my password is visible on the Chrome tab, what do I do? Right? Is it a security issue? And uh, so, so there were like different kinds and, and things around redirects. I type say cryo.do and then I don't see 200 as the status. Instead, I saw something like say 301 or 302. What's exactly happening? Right? These are all for you to learn and then experiment with. Right? Now, here we have a great way for you to share that joy with the world as well. You can start creating a blog, right? And then slowly start documenting your journey, right? There's like uh, all the, uh, all the how, how do you go about structuring, etc. There's some guidelines that we have shared over here. Learn throughout this week, start putting them into sort of some sort of a material, share your experience with the world, and then you're also will be eligible for some goodies as well. All right, so all the details again will be shared on the Slack channel. So get started right away. Okay, especially if you're kind of helping your peers with some interesting questions or you see your peers asking some very interesting questions outside of the byte content as well, that would be amazing to add to your blog, right? Show them that you have helped your peers. That's an awesome thing, right? And which actually starts putting you in a direction where you will learn more and more, right? That's about it. Uh, see you all tomorrow at 6 p.m. And hopefully if you have not completed the HTTP byte to get started, feel free to let us know wherever you have issues. We'll be able to get on top of it and then solve it for you right away. And then also finish the rest byte. It's gonna be even more fun. Okay, all right, thank you so much and uh, enjoy your rest of the weekend, whatever few hours is left by doing the rest byte. Okay, thank you so much then, bye guys.